Hi everyone. I received a lot of messages on my video on copper iodide about what I did with the iodine. I decided to convert it back to potassium iodide. Since there was some interest in how to do this, I thought I would do a video showing others. To begin, you'll need some iodine in water or alcohol. Here's the iodine I had left after making copper iodide. Mine is contaminated. It will need to be cleaned up. If yours is clean, then this will be a very simple reaction. You will also need some potassium hydroxide. Please be careful handling the hydroxide as it is extremely corrosive and can blind you in seconds if splashed in your eyes. Besides iodine, I know there should also be some potassium sulfate contaminating this solution. In fact, during the time this is set, several crystals of potassium sulfate formed on the bottom of the beaker. So I added the beaker to an ice bath to get as much of the potassium sulfate out as possible. After setting for a few minutes, I filtered the mixture to remove the crystals. Of course, I can't remove all the potassium sulfate, but hopefully I removed enough that what is left will remain in solution and can be separated later. Here you can see the crystals that were left in the beaker. I will wash these with ice cold water and then save them for later use. Now it is time to go ahead and run the reaction. Place the filtered solution on a stir plate and add a stir bar and begin stirring. Now grab your potassium hydroxide and slowly begin adding it. We're looking for the solution to go clear as the iodine reacts with the potassium hydroxide. Huh, mine does not seem to be going clear. In fact, it seems to be turning a blue color. This is probably due to copper contamination. Let's take a look at what this should look like if we had started with clean reactants. Here's some tincture of iodine, which is just iodine in alcohol mixed with a small amount of sodium iodide. I'm going to place it in the small beaker and then add some potassium hydroxide. As I swirl the solution, you can see that the color goes from a dark red to a clear. This is what you should get if you have pure iodine in a pure solvent. Now let's go back and see if we can clean out the contaminant that's making our solution blue. First I'll start by filtering out any solids. The filtered solution shows the blue much better. So the question is, what is the blue compound? Well, it can't be copper sulfate, so my guess is copper hydroxide, which also has a blue color if mixed in water. If it's copper hydroxide, then I'm in luck as the simple act of boiling will decompose it into copper oxide, which is not soluble in water, making it easy to remove by filtering. So let's boil down this solution to decompose the hydroxide and remove some of the water. So here's what I got after boiling it down. You can see that the blue is gone and there's a black precipitate of copper oxide floating around. I'm going to remove the copper oxide by vacuum filtration this time since I want to be sure to get all the small particles out. Also the solution is saturated and vacuum filtration is faster than gravity filtration. After filtering you can see that the solution is now clear and all the oxide was captured in the filter. So now I'm going to continue to boil the mixture till I have about 50 milliliters. If you started with pure reactants you can boil to dryness. After boiling I'll set the beaker aside to cool to room temperature. Once cool, I can add the beaker to an ice bath to pull as much of this potassium iodide out of solution as possible. The potassium sulfate should remain in solution and can be decanted off giving me reasonably pure potassium iodine you can see here. Now all that is left to do is to test to be sure that we really do have potassium iodide. I've placed a small amount of the potassium iodide we just made on a watch glass and we'll add some sulfuric acid. As you can see we get some fizzing and a deep red color of iodine confirming that we do have potassium iodide. I'll set the rest of the potassium iodide aside to dry for later use. Thanks for watching. 